Welcome into another episode of Fourth and Five presented by Ortho Arkansas. And okay, I hear you. Malachi Singleton, Taylor Green, who should be the starting quarterback? Is it time to have Malachi have a whole two weeks of preparation to come out as a starter? Is Taylor Green healthy? What should we do? I'm going to go ahead and address it in this week's viewer comments. I'm also going to talk about that clip I showed when Taylor kind of came out and he just kind of looked down and not very fiery as a leader. And I made comments saying I feel like they really need that um, for a team, especially from the quarterback position. Well, I had the opportunity to actually sit down with Taylor Green in person, and I asked him that very question. I'll let you know how that conversation went. And so, uh, and a couple other things we're going to address in viewer comments. Uh, but first, I also want to let you know we're doing a giveaway. All right, so we got some fourth and five, fourth and five merch. Let me get in the mic. Uh, this hoodie right here, uh, black hoodie, it's an extra large, um, so comfy for whoever wants this. The way we're going to do it, all you have to do is repost this video. It doesn't matter if it's on, on Twitter, uh, Facebook, or YouTube. I'm not sure how you repost it on YouTube, but I guess we'll figure that out. And as soon as you do that, you have to tag three people in that post. I'm going to go through and see all the people who do this. Uh, please do this as soon as possible because I'm going to put all those names in a hat. Pull out a name, boom, I'm going to ship you this hoodie. Or if you're going to be up in favor for the Texas game, I'll just give it to you in person. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about and uh, tell you more about Taylor Green and his injury update status here in a little bit from Kurt Reynolds. Tell you what we're going to do with that. Uh, but before we kind of get into all of this, I want to give a big thanks to our sponsor for our viewer comments. Once again, Ellis Home Inspections, LLC. It's going to be the place to be if you're looking to buy a home or if you want to sell a home. You got to inspect that thing. Make sure it's all buttoned up and tight and ready to go. Once again, Patrick Ellis, two decades of military service. And I always want to just remind you with that type of background, if you have somebody who pays attention to the details, the small things. I'm telling you right now, if you get a home, and somebody says, oh, don't worry about that. Find a new inspector ASAP, all right? You do need to worry about that because I'm telling you, eventually it's going to be a problem and you're going to have to pay for it. You need to know everything you're getting into beforehand. So big shout out to our sponsor. I'll have a link in our description to their website. So if you're interested, just go there and tell you everything you need to know before purchasing the home. I want to thank Patrick for everything he's done for us here at 4th and 5. So I'll go ahead and address the first one. Like I said, it's all over our viewer comments. Let me go ahead and pull up our first post. This is going to be from David Suggs. Do you think Singleton should start? And is he only having success um, he's having due to him being QB2? No one game plans for the second string. And I also couple this one too. Um, this person despised the great evil Tejas. <laughs> the Shorthorns over there. But when Yours was struggling with Georgia, Sharkeesian replaced Yours with Manning. Our coaching staff would rather run an injured green on the field when we have a suitable backup and believes Malachi is the best quarterback that they have. This is from Evan Williams Black, dash D1H. And so um, you are right. I was surprised seeing Taylor Green just hobbling around, barely being able to be mobile, which is his strong suit, getting outside the pocket. I was a little surprised he stayed in as long as he did um, and them not going to Singleton a little bit earlier. Once again, when stuff like that happens, it really makes me believe they've seen enough in practice to make them feel like even an injured Taylor Green um, is better than a Malachi Singleton. Now, however, when Malachi came in against the ones for Ole Miss, seemed to be moving the ball pretty well. I don't think it's so much not being able to prep for the second string quarterback just because their playing styles are somewhat similar. Uh, both quarterbacks who can run the ball, uh, both quarterbacks that can throw the ball decently well. I, I can't say yet, and I haven't seen enough film to say who throws a better ball and who's more accurate. Just based off what I've seen so far, I'll probably give that nod to Malachi Singleton. I, I, I really will. It's just what I've seen on tape so far. I really haven't seen him had a chance to develop and grow to see enough tape to see if he gets more and more and more accurate. Uh, but that throw to Luke has for a touchdown, it was very similar to a throw that he had against UAPB. Um, to Isaac Tesla that was a one-hand catch and just leading the receiver perfectly uh, with that seam route and uh, putting the ball exactly where it needed to be. Um, so that's two times we see him uh, throw that ball and it be on the money both times, threading the needle. Now, yes, we did see a similar throw that Taylor had uh, against 
Mississippi State um, to – wow, I'm drawing a blank. It's been a while. Jordan Anthony, hopefully I'm saying that right. And uh, that was a beautiful ball. Uh, that was amazing. And so it, it's tough for me to give a fair analysis and comparison because there's just not a lot of tape that we've seen from Malachi. But I will say this, from what we have seen, he does look like a very promising player. Now, it takes him a little bit to kind of get going. I think that's just a lack of prepping and going to the game weekend, understanding that you're going to be the starter. He gets thrown out there. I think he gets a little too excited. But once he calms his nerves down, he seems to be like a legit option at the quarterback position. But we don't have a big enough sample size for me to just flat out say Malachi should be our guy moving forward. And I, I'm trying my best not to be biased in this aspect of I just trust Coach Petrino and his judgment. Now, this NIL stuff, I, I don't know the inner workings. And I would say this is probably not the case, but this has been brought up in enough conversations. Are you a little bit more likely to keep in a guy if you have a big donor that put up a lot of money to pay most of his NIL stuff who says, I want to make sure I get my money's worth from my investment. And then if you end up benching a guy who essentially cost you a million dollars or a donor a million dollars, and that investment is sitting on the bench, it's going to be very tough for that donor to come around another you know cycle and put more money up for the next guy. Um, I really hope that's not the case. Um, but unfortunately, there's a scenario where that might happen. Maybe not at the University of Arkansas, but at least for some other programs for sure that are tight on these NIL dealings. Um, whew, that's just a whole different bag of worms. But uh, Josh did a breakdown of Malachi Singleton. And uh, from what I saw and what he pointed out, um, those seem like very routine, fundamental progressions and follow through. It's really being very coachable. And so that was good to see. Uh, I did watch more tape, and there are still a few more things that could have been a little bit more critical and pointed out of areas that he needed to get better. Uh, so I guess we will find out. Now, the thing is, I'm going to have Kurt Reynolds from Ortho, Arkansas on, and we're going to go over that play where Talon got hurt. Thing is, is Talon injured or not? Is he 100%? Uh, and Kurt Reynolds is going to give his opinion based off that injury. Then you saw the clips of him on the sideline trying to cut – and move around and just based off the things that gave him the most pain or discomfort, Kurt Riz is going to let you know if you feel like he should be healed up by now or if a banged up Talon is heading into this game, do you start with the guy who is more healthy? Uh, I, I guess we'll find out. All right, so great comments right there. I want to move on to a another comment. This is going to be from... Steven Dobbins, Talon looked asleep this morning, saw multiple players on our sideline yacht. And I can't speak for multiple players, but I do remember seeing that clip of Talon coming out, kind of looking with that blank face. And I pointed out, look at Jackson Dart, who's just fiery, fiery. So I had Talon Green in studio the other day, and we were, and I asked him that. I said, have you been pushed and challenged to be a little bit more vocal? Uh, I said, for an example, that play where you gave up that sack fumble in the end zone, uh, I think Amirian Harris, uh, Amirian Harris did a poor job with his technique and should have got to his blocking responsibility instead of getting out there a little bit late because he was indecisive, gave up a sack fumble. Huge point in that game where everything, that's where the wheels really fell off. And I said, I don't think there's a problem if you go to the sideline and get in Amirian's face and say, what the hell were you thinking? Um, I think Talon is a super nice guy. He's very passionate. Um, he's He has all of his players back. And I think sometimes he may think that that's not being a good leader and calling your guys out, and it's going to maybe hurt their feelings or make them feel some type of way from you. Uh, but I challenged him, and I said, Talon, I'm going to tell you what that would do for me, and this is what it'll do for the real dogs on your team. I talk about dogs a lot. Not a lot of fire. Uh, not a lot of fire under their ass and get them going uh, because they understand that's unacceptable. And sometimes when mistakes go without anything being said, coaches are supposed to say it. But when your own teammates say it, 
And the good thing that Talon has when he has this maybe potential altercation in the future, he's been having their back from day one. This isn't coming from a player who you haven't had any relationships with from, you know, when camp started up until this point. He's had their back from day one. So that offensive player, that offensive lineman would know, okay, he's coming at me because I know I'm better than this. I know this dude has my back. I know he loves me. That's my quarterback. I do have to tighten up. And I tell you, that feeling right there, it's just infectious. And I and I told Taylor, like, be who you are, no doubt, but understand sometimes, not necessarily for you, but your guys feed off that. I mean, Ryan Mallett did that all the time whenever we were struggling. Hell, one of my best friends, Wade Grayson, I was about ready to punch him in the face after I dropped the ball um, and two t- two plays before that had an offsides, and then the play before that had a holding call, just making it awful position for our team. I didn't even have to worry about Coach Petrino chewing me out because Wade Grayson was doing it on the field. Now, I was about ready to drop kick him, but I understood where it came from. He knows I'm better than that. So I really challenged him in that area, and hopefully uh, that's something he can start adding into his repertoire of knowing the spots when your team needs you to be that type of leader, uh, but not get too far away from who you are. Um, that So before we get going again, uh, I have to uh, take a quick pause and quick time out. Like I said, uh, I really like doing this and I will always keep this content free, but I got to get to my sponsors. And this is a cool one. I really want your opinions on this one. Uh, as we go ahead and talk about our partnership with uh, Oakland sports, um, the line is up right now. Uh, I'm just curious. Please leave it in the comments. You don't have to bet. It's not for you. And if you're a better, I'm just curious about what you think about this. But the line for the Arkansas game is up right now. And it has Texas as a minus 13 uh, favorite. So if you're not familiar with betting, this is how it works. When you see Arkansas plus 13, that means they're the underdog. Okay. So essentially, if the game started, Arkansas would start with 13 points, okay? So if they end up losing by seven, Arkansas technically would still win because they started the game with 13 points. So I'm very curious, how do you feel uh, about the 13 points and you think Arkansas can keep it closer or do you think this team's at a point where the wheels just fall off? And the thing about this Arkansas-Texas game, anything is possible. And the other interesting point, too, is how many points are going to be on on the board. So the over-under is set at 57 and a half. Uh, If you're not familiar with that, that's just the total points from both teams. At the end of the game, you think it'll add up to be over 57 and a half or under 57 and a half. So a high-scoring game, low-scoring game, or do you think that's just about right? Uh, So uh, in the comments, let me know if you think those are pretty fair. Uh, does Arkansas cover the spread or do they get blown out or do they just straight up beat Texas? Uh, so that's a, a thing I need y'all's help with. Give me your opinion. And based off the majority of our comments and the lay- way that you go, uh, I'll, I'll put five bucks on that and I'll let you know how it goes. I'll, I'll donate it to our, our Christmas gifts so we can make sure we send more ornaments out to everybody. Uh, like I said, we got a a good lineup for you coming up this week. Um, make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to get with Grant and if he has time, uh, we're really going to dig into this Texas game to try to give you a good little pregame analysis of the team that is coming up to Arkansas for the early kickoff. Also too, want to give a shout out to Darren McFadden. I believe he is going to do a little partnership with Slim's chickens, Slim chickens up in Fayetteville, a little meet and greet Friday. Uh, fourth and five, if we do have time and we can all get there, we're going to set up a little meet and greet along with it. So you can come out, hang out with Darren. He may serve you a couple uh, Slim's plates and all that stuff, and you get to hang out and maybe be a part of our show if we're able to set up and do it from Slim's as well. So uh, I would check out Slim's website for more details on that. I think that'd be a pretty cool opportunity for a lot of Razorback fans who are going to be in town to meet the greatest Razorback football player of all time. Somebody debate me if you want to. Uh, the there's no question that D-Mac, uh, he, he, he holds that title for sure, in my opinion. Um, uh, one other note, too. Uh, I told about the continued prayers that we need for our family here at 4th and 5. You know, Josh has some family stuff going on, so some prayers for him. And But once again, Matt and his wife, uh, y'all been doing a great job with the ornaments. I want to go ahead and keep these going. Don't forget, these are on our website. The special one with the little hat on it. I can never get this camera to focus, you know. Uh, 
there it is hey yeah this ornament right here is up on our website if you purchase this one proceeds will go to a donation for cancer research and the other half is to get presents for kids right here and local shelters who don't have a lot for christmas and uh y'all have already done a great job with those ornaments so keep that thing going um that would really mean a lot so Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, y'all stay tuned for Friday's episode. It's going to be a little jam-packed. We're going to put a couple of these episodes together just because it's just been a weird week here with 4th and 5. So uh, I apologize of not having some timely content coming out. Just a lot of moving parts on this end. And uh, we got uh, something we've been working on, a new website um, that is in the works. And as soon as that thing is launched, I will give you all the information. We're going to create big chat rooms. Uh, we're going to give you all opportunities to have usernames. And we're just going to grow this community here on 4th and 5. And we're trying to now add a high school element. It's going to take some time, all right? We really want to get into the high school ranks and start – um, giving you opinions of our fourth and five ratings for some of the top players in the state and bordering the state as well. As not only do we look at these high school athletes, but we start getting into the scouting and recruiting world as well to see who should be on the Razorbacks radar. I know this NIL and portal stuff, a lot of people are just picking and prodding. You still got to recruit, still got to recruit. And we're going to have a whole database. I've been working with a friend of mine from high school who has – you know, the the market on when it comes to high school talent. So we're going to sit down with him and hopefully that will be our big plan in the off season is now what is next for the Razorbacks. And so thank you all for the continued support. I know it's been a little bit slow week. That's the bye week. Almost kind of needed that rest. But y'all get ready because we got to turn this thing right back up because we got a lot more football to get to. We still got to get win number six and see where we're going to go bowling. We're going bowling. Easy. I heard our, I heard you. I, I, I could hear your thoughts through the monitor. I heard a few of y'all say, if we get six wins, we'll beat La Tech. If we don't, that's going to be one hell of an episode Monday morning. I'll tell you that. Thank y'all for watching 4th and 5.